hello everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you all are doing great so today in this video we are going to talk about what is rpc or remote procedural call and how does it basically work so in our day-to-day -day work as software developers we make a lot of apis and now these apis can be of different types like it can be a rest api it can be a rpc api so today we are going to specifically talk about an RPC API. How does it work? What do we mean by RPC? So we'll talk about all of that. So uh, as the name suggests that it is a remote procedure call. Now in uh, software terms procedure is basically a function. So it is a remote function call. So why it is a remote function? Because this is a function which does not exist on your uh, machine but it is deployed somewhere which you are trying to call so as the name suggests it is a synchronous call so you need to get a response only then uh, it is marked as success if you have some code you embed you compile your code with the uh, client of the particular service you are trying to hit so you build your code with that the client which you have makes a call to this uh, client of the server and basically this has all the functions so for example let's suppose you have some API add product so for this add product you would have a function in this client and your whatever code you have uh, that code will make a call to this add product method of this client and then this client will take over to make a call to the server and whatever we'll see how that happens so what does this client do it packs your procedure call like whatever function call you send some parameters and makes a system call to send the message to the server now this packing of this all the parameters and then making a call this is called marshalling now whenever we talk about web, web servers and whatever we always say that the, the calls are http calls http is a protocol which is used to basically interact why and where does this http come into the picture like we are talking about rpc now where is http in this so uh, so the you have to first see that how this client is actually interacting with the server so internally what's happening is that this client has a http tunnel created with the server so there is a connection open through a particular http port and whenever you make a call it makes a call to this tunnel to the server now this helps to bypass the firewalls at both these places because the connection is already established and helps you get the results in a sh short time so how it works is that uh, you make a call to the client client you are a client so you make a call to the rpc client it then calls to the client network proxy it cre opens up a tcp connection with the rpc's server and uh, then finally it makes a call now depending on this that your connection is http or https the ports will be different so mostly generally the port for http is 80 and for https is 443 at which the calls usually happen between the client and the server now rpc can also just depend on tcp it does not have to transfer the data over http because as you know http is a layer 7 protocol and tcp is a layer 4 protocol so what it can do it can just package the parameters and transfer in the form of tcp packets to the server and it does not have to uh, basically depend on http to uh, forward this data create create http header and basically put all of this in the http packet now how is rpc different from rest let's see how are these different so rpc and rest both they are just kind of api constructs it is not you know a type of a call that you are making so like if you talk in a like layman terms it is not like you are calling someone by speaking or by writing it's not that the point is that you are making a call and the way you speak is different so basically you can say it is kind of the language you say like English or Hindi or like that so you can relate it to kind of like that so RPC and rest have their own different languages for this so RPC mostly functions on uh, actions and rest mostly functions on 
the resources now what this means we will see so rest is just some set of constraints that it should be stateless the response should declare cacheability and similarly rpc also has some constraints like this now in rpc there can be just two types of api like get and post so this shows that it is mostly focused on the action and not like the data part similarly the rest it supports all the crud operations basically get post put and delete so it shows that it mostly focus on the resource like what resource you want to update or get uh, so that's the only major difference between an RPC and a rest call internally both of them use uh, HTTP uh, to make a call they can also use uh, TCP also so uh, these are both just api constructs a way to actually create the api now uh, the api which are adhere to the rest constraints whatever constraints it has it is called a rest api and api which adheres to the rpc constraints it is an rpc api but there is no as such difference in the way the call is being made that was all for today's video i hope you liked it got some information about what rpc is uh, let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments down below and I will see you in the next one.